<laughs> no painting with you today, video game time. Nope. another one of those tutorials where I teach you how to paint your armies fast. So in today's tutorial I had to oblige to some people requests where they wanted me to paint some skeletons so they can actually do that on their own armies. Skeletons are tremendously easy to paint with washes. I mean it really kills. I got a bad feeling about this. So in order to do this I had to build a skeleton out of the big box that I have. Which is not easy. Because I painted all my skeletons. So anyways, <clears throat> this is what I got. One single sad skeleton. So the tutorial is going to be boring if I only do this guy. You suck! But no worries, because I could open up a blister that I had and I wanted to paint for a long time. This is the Curse Company, one of the things that Games Workshop used to do when they were cool. Okay? Cool miniatures from a cool era. Today's tutorial is going to be a two for one. You're gonna learn how to paint skeletons with washes, but with the techniques that are gonna to apply to Kruger, the captain of the Curse Company, you can learn how to paint also Grave Guard and basically skeletons in armor. I gotta prepare the miniatures, I gotta get rid of the mold uh, lines, any flash lines that they have, put them on bases, put sand on them, and prime them. But in the meantime, you just get ready for the next part of the video where you're gonna learn how to paint the skeletons. Are you ready? Let's go! Uh, here we are. Now, if you're new to these kind of tutorials, I'm gonna tell you what you exactly need to start painting. Uh, first of all, you're gonna need some water, clean water, some brushes, and some paper towels to dry the brushes on. Of course, having paints is mandatory. And my miniatures are ready, they have been primed white with a flat primer. And, well, we are ready to start. Now, the first step always in painting miniatures with uh, washes and inks is, of course, after that we prime them, is a star painted metal. The first metal that I'm gonna use is this one, Lead Belcher. I'm gonna find the pieces of uh, the miniature that need to be painted, like the armor and whatnot, and I'm gonna do exactly that. Now I'm going to proceed to do Shining Gold. I use Shining Gold because this is the color that I've used for my whole army of Vampire Counts. And is well, I'm not going to change things now. Nope! After having painted so many of them. But you can use totally any color that you prefer for the gold part. Alright, let's do the other ones. The Elf Skeleton is a great miniature. It gives so much character to the unit. I wish uh, they would have done that several times over. I mean, it is great to have a nice arrangement of skeletons, but they are all humans and sometimes you want to go a little bit more thematic. I also have an army of High Elves or Highborn Elves and I painted them in a nice blue and yellow combination that I want to apply to this dude. So I'm trying to paint them in a way that ties in with the way that I painted all the things in my other armies. There are interesting details in the banner. They look like jewels from several races like dwarves which is the one that I'm currently painting and Lizardman, which is this one, and this one I'm not really sure what it is. 
but the attention to detail, these small things for a painter like me are a delight to behold. I love seeing these small details that tie in with the rest of the universe now gone and make you wonder how did they get to here? How did the unit get these small tokens and put them in the banner as signs of victory upon those races? So here we go, this is the Goblin Drummer and he's the only one that has that the unit has that belongs to the this green skin race. Okay. Next step now. All right, let's just start painting the bones and other stuff. I'm gonna use surfing sepia as usual. You know, one of my favorite inks. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and give a nice wash all over the bones. Skeletons are tremendously easy to paint with this technique. I'm going to do the same with metal and wood. Although I'm going to work out those tonalities a little bit more later. The wash doesn't have to be too thick because we want the bone to be somewhat uh, white. For those of you who are trying to get your armies painted as fast as possible and or maybe you, you just want to get a, an army that is easy to paint and you just want to start playing right away I will totally consider going either and dying dynasties or dynasties or vampire covenant because those two armies are tremendously easy to paint once you get the knack of how to do the washes and as you can see it's, it's very easy uh, you can have an army painted in little time if you put your mind to it you probably will have a full huge army painted in within a month or something like that do not forget the metals they need some of the wash as well to gain richness and depth the technique is not as much painting although I call it like that as pushing and hear me out what I do is I push the wash into the places that I want it to be that means that I have to make sure that the wash goes into the recesses that I want it to be at the end of the day so it's carefully pushing it where I want it to be this is stupidly fast. I mean, if only all the armies could be painted as fast as this one. Kruger. Kruger has a lot of armor. And compared to the other guys, and also a lot of leather, that I have to find a good equilibrium between all the stuff that he's got that is brown and other colors so he gets a nice paint job so the inside of the cape has this furry texture and I want to make sure that it looks like that like fur I think I'll have to come back to some of the places just to make sure this miniatures have so many details that <coughs> Everybody's bound to miss a few of them on the first time that they paint them. So it's okay, you don't have to worry about that. You will be able to fix those afterwards. Just make sure that you see them, spot them, and fix them afterwards. You might be wondering why I haven't painted the sword yet. So I want to do the sword in a different way to show that it's magical, it's not just a piece of steel no magic properties. Miniature painting is creating the uh, illusion of things that are in a small scale and non-descriptive sometimes into something that is more akin to the thing that we're actually uh, trying to represent. 
So color is a great deal on that one. It's a lump of metal. It's a lump of metal if you stand away from it. But if you put color to it, then features become uh, uh, recognizable and, and you can make uh, yourself become aware of the ideas that were put into the model itself when it was sculpted. Okay, so we're done with sepia and it's now time for the next step. So on this next step I just want to go over some details and I'm gonna start with surfing oh sorry with blood letter blood letter which I'm gonna use sparely on the things that I want to paint red you know my vampire kind army is really vanilla on the paint scheme is yes basically uh, bone and red and black the only thing that's a little bit different about it is the magic weapons from the uh, whites and well, some of the jewels and maybe maybe the banners themselves which are kind of blue because I wanted to do um, a new stuff on it but I'll show you some pictures someday of my vampire army which I'm really proud of because it's my first army and I think I painted it like three times maybe like I had a scheme at the beginning and then I painted over it and then I painted over it my skeletons have been painted at least at least three times or more maybe more so some of them so yeah well as I was saying I'm gonna use red for some of the details on this unit on these miniatures so they get like a tie-in with the rest of the army Red and black are really cool colors. They go really well with each other. They attract the attention and they are easy to paint. Red is probably one of the first colors everybody knows how to paint well. With either layering or shading with washes. In this case it's tremendously easy to paint. I'm gonna use a combination of washes. The first one is this and then another one and you'll see how you get a rich red with just a couple of washes so I'm gonna be painting all these guys the rest stuff that they have and then we can see the second step on how to do this I'm gonna let that dry and in the meantime I'm gonna use Cassandra Yellow to get some of the details on the High Elf skeleton so it ties in with my High Elf army. Now of course this skeleton and his armor are not gonna look as clean as my High Elves because this guy hasn't obviously uh, obviously hasn't done his laundry on some time, which is a big no-no in Ulthuan as far as I know. I'm also going to paint the moon. Since we're doing this so fast and the washes have not finished drying, I'm gonna go and do right one flesh shade onto the drums so it looks like some kind of leather or something like that that came from somebody. It's the skin. I mean, somebody flayed someone and, well, whatever. It looks good, period. Now, a little bit of Drakenhof nightshade to get some of the clothing. I want him to look like a, one of the goblins in my army. 
orcs and goblins. So I'm gonna paint his clothes in this wash. So it looks like he's wearing the same stuff like my cave goblins, night goblins from the other armies. This is how you paint black with washes. I'm gonna do Gilliman Blue while everything is drying and to my dear friend the elf. As you can see blue and yellow go really well together, they make a beautiful contrast and we need for it to dry so we can continue. The banner is going to be like on the rest of my army a interesting, an interesting combination of the three colors that I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it the first coat of blue. Now remember, whatever colors you want to put in your army, it's up to you. Yes, you've seen these ones because I like them. They are already in my army and I think they will look good on it. Now that the washes have dried, I'm gonna proceed to the second coat of red and for this one I'm gonna use my new coat the arms in wash and I'm gonna yes go ahead and put it straight onto previous red wash And now I'm gonna do uh, another wash, a darker one, on some places in the scalpers. So I'm gonna use this brown wash from Cold the Arms. And I wanna, wanna water it down so it just go into the recesses of the bones. As you can see I'm doing it mostly on the ribs and places like that. Fingers, where there is some extra texture. For the elf I'm going to paint the boots as well. Because the brown I use on my highborn elves is close to what you will achieve with a coat of serpent sepia and another one of these dark brown wash. The back of the shield I waited until now to do this pattern that I'm going to draw. In the same way and with a different wash, in this case the old Citadel flesh wash, I'm going to proceed and draw some lines in the wood of the spear, well, the banner pole now.
few crisscross lines will give the impression that the blade has been sorry, that shaft has been hit several times. I'm going to darken the leather on his dagger as well. Some more stuff here. Creating texture on simple surfaces by just adding different shades of washes. Now this is a little bit advanced for those of you who don't have the pulse. So it's not mandatory, it's just an optional step. It's up to you to decide if you want to do it or not. For Krieger's boots, I'm gonna use this chestnut wash. The fur inside Kruger's cape, I will be using uh, this color, which is the flesh wash from Cody Arms. I'm just gonna give it a wash overall. Not too much, but now we're gonna proceed to do a stronger wash on the metals to gain a little bit more texture. Will make everything look older than the worn out. I'll do a lighter one on here to even out all the previous steps. If you don't really want to spend that much time, uh, this is a good moment to stop on the bones and whatnot. Yes. So I'm going to darken the blue now. I'm using Azurman Blue for doing this. This wash is not made anymore, as you might have learned from my previous videos, or maybe because you, you already have tried to find it. So if you don't have anything like this uh, nearby, well, then you can also try Dragon Hope Nightshade, but I found that the results are not exactly the same. And now I'm gonna darken the clothes that I painted with Dragon Hop Nightshade with normal oil. That's creating the final appearance for the blackish clothing. Normal oil works really well with this. I will not trade this combination for anything else. Dragon Hop Nightshade creates the greatest highlights and non oil creates the dark black recess. So you have the two hit combo, the shading and highlight. So for Kruger's boots, I'm gonna use an old brown ink from Citadel. Light coat. So it has to be watered down. And use it carefully. Okay, it's time to do some of the details and for that I'm gonna start using Druchi Violet. With Druchi Violet I'm just gonna paint a couple of things that I wanted to make a little bit different basically on Kruger and is this ribbon that he has on his helmet. 
So, really straightforward. He has a coat of this, and we'll have more interesting headpiece. Same here with his dagger, only on the handle of it. And that will be it. I also want to do something else to Kruger, and it's because of his sword. I'm gonna use Way Watcher Green. This is a technique I use with the skin of my orcs and goblins, and it's paint yellow before and then give them a coat of green. Gotta find a position for him to dry so not all the wash goes uh, to either side to the top or to the bottom of the blade. But I also have something else. Let me put this somewhere. There you go. Which is the shield on this skeleton has some kind of IV or something. So since those I'm gonna make a nice contrast with the red and I'm gonna paint them green. As you can see this green onto white is too pale so you have to work it in two steps at least. While those two washes dry it's time to start doing one of my favorite parts of the painting process which is highlighting the metals. Now this is optional if you don't want to uh, go overboard you know with work and whatnot Highlighting is just a step that makes the miniature look a little bit cleaner and more three-dimensional, but it's totally optional. And this is how I do. I go against the blade and just draw small lines with metallic color of my choice. Now that the wash has dried, meanwhile I was painting that metallic highlight, I'm gonna give it a second coat of green. So it gets more of what I'm looking for it to look like. Okay, I also need to give it an extra coat of now Levithan purple. This is an experiment. I don't know how this one will combine with the new Druchy Violet, but I guess that if it's something like what happens with the blues, it's gonna make it look a little bit darker. Uh -huh. Yes, it does. Which is exactly what I want it to be. I needed an extra shade on that. So, if your undead army is going to be purple, well, there you go. That's how you do it. That's how you do a nice, rich and deep purple. Okie dokie, let's get back to Shining Gold to do some highlights on those parts. Just like before with the other metallic color. Let's go through those and put some highlights.
All right, now I'm done basically with every single step that for those of you who want to paint fast, this is more or less where you should be stopping. Now remember, I did some uh, dark washes on the bones and I don't recommend you doing those because they will darken the bones too much. I will stop on surfing sepia. But because I'm gonna do some several steps after now, um, I did this in order to blend these miniatures with the look and feel of my um, other Vampire Counts army. So, if you wanted to make your miniatures look in a certain way, like, you know, paint fast and make them look like bones and whatnot, this is where you should be stopping. But I'm not gonna stop here, I'm gonna do some more details. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is use this yellow to highlight some stuff. Next thing I'm going to do now is paint black some of the gems and this is a technique that I use to make, well, gems look like gems. These miniatures have several of them basically all over the place and this is something that is going to tie in with my army because I have a distinctive way of painting the gems on my vampire counts. But the first step it's just to paint them black so I can work on them afterwards. Black is also going to be used for picking up the teeth later. So I'm going to paint all their teeth black as well. Even if you are using only washes and you want to stop on the simplest part, which is not giving extra work on them, I recommend that you do the, the teeth separately because they will look great on the miniatures. This is not part of the tutorial per se, because we, we are doing uh, washes, but this is how I paint my gems. I use these three colors in order, one after the other, and then I highlight them in a way that makes the gem look three-dimensional. I'm gonna start with the darkest one, which is jade green, and I'm gonna, and yeah, it's gonna put a drop over here. That's as much as I'm gonna need. And each one of the gems that I'm going to paint, I'm gonna start with it with one of the corners, like so, okay, in this case, and I'm gonna paint it with this color. And I'm gonna do this with all the gems that I got and then go to the next color. So this is the first part. So on the next step I'm gonna use this foul green. Yes, put another drop. And same process as before. We're gonna paint a small portion of the jewel. But we have to leave the previous color showing a little bit. So is the same thing as before, smaller surface. I'll be doing this with the other gems and then get back to the next step. Once again, same thing, same thing. Yes, a small, small line down there. This will give it a hint of a different color. We are almost, almost there. But before that, I'm gonna do build time green. And I'm going to make a little bit more shade on the blade so it gets, you know, a little bit more texture. Not texture, depth. I always say texture, but it's not exactly that. So I can make it look more mean looking, more interesting. Same thing I'm going to do with this, because it's too light. What is the final ingredient? Well, in my case, it is this one, okay? Since my skeletons are kind of really 
uh, white looking bleached they have been picked clean by the elements and animals and whatnot that's in my army I'm gonna go ahead and highlight each one of these bones with white now this is something that if you want to paint your army fast you should not be doing this takes some time and if you're gonna do a, like 60 skeletons at once this is crazy I tell you from experience it is freaking crazy okay but I have no choice because I want these to tie with the rest of my army so I'm gonna have to do that how do you prevent yourself from doing something as stupid as this if you want to paint fast really simple just stick to surfing sepia and paint all your skeletons with that color and nothing else nothing else if you're as crazy as I am which is not a bad thing at least that's what I think my wife maybe not you can go ahead and highlight some of the bones or some of the parts and I think they will look much better but otherwise just stick to your plan paint fast get your army ready ASAP alright so as you can see I have picked each one of the teeth individually with a small dot and for the jewels are gonna do something similar is just paint a dot in the dark area and a small line on the lower area that is green this has to be repeated with each one of the jewels individually and this requires a little bit of pulse this is what we should be looking at now has a small smile so we're gonna go ahead and go little by little drawing two rows of teeth which is basically writing like a small dot over an eye on each one of them for the next part of the video and this is completely optional for you I'm gonna use this wash in the golden parts of my miniatures and the way I use this wash is I mix it with plenty of water so I get a not much consistent thing so it makes kind of a patina on the gold probably the best choice if you want to create uh, a patina is using Nihilac um, Oxide I think that's the name of it it's a citadel wash or technical color that allows you to more or less have the same effect And voila, done. So, bases now. Right. 
we are very close to the end of the tutorial. Now I'm gonna paint the bases. This is a tremendously personal choice, depending on what you want to achieve with your miniatures and your army. But I'm gonna show you the way I do mine. I start with a coat of Rhinox Hide that I apply generously to all the sand that I have glued onto the bases. Now that the brown is dry already, I'm gonna use the, the next one. I use a Scrag Brown, which is a reddish tone and I'm gonna use it to highlight with a light dry brush to sand all my miniatures. So the next step is Ushapti Bone, which I'm gonna do well, another light, 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 light uh, dry brush on the sand. And with this one, the sand will be done. So, careful, not too much, because I don't want it to look like very clear. I want it to look more like mud, something like that. And as usual, whenever you're doing dry brushing, use a really old brush. Don't use the expensive, good ones that you might be using for painting. Take care of your brushes and they will take care of your painting. Dry brush is a tremendously damaging technique for your tools, so make sure that you use an old one on one, or one that you decide that you're gonna use only for this purpose. And yeah, here we are on the last one. It's um, this is the way I paint my bases. I like um, a black trim on the sides. Is that is a really neutral color, and it goes well with any gaming surface. And then that will be it on the painting of the miniatures.